you. Okay, I am going to go ahead and start the soil probes and soil testing procedures. Uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite things to talk about is just to remind people um, that it's totally worth the money to do a soil test. You may be wasting your time and money if you don't know what your soil needs for optimal production. Um, gardening and farming efforts will be less productive if they lack the nutrients needed for optimal production. <clears throat> Fertilizer purchases may be incorrect, supplying nutrients that are not needed, wasting money and possibly contributing to non-point source pollution. As you can see, uh, and the cucumbers on the left, classic potassium deficiency. Um, this was from a, a trip, a SARE trip that we took to the Pacific Islands. This was um, in the Marshall Islands. And they have a lot of nutrient deficiencies that are quite visible. So I used some slides from that trip. Another slide is in the background on this, on this um, next slide. Uh, so this is why we need to be adding nutrients to our garden every year. One season's harvest of the edible portion of garden vegetables removes on average two to three pounds of nitrogen, a half a pound of P2O5, and three pounds of K2O per 1,000 square feet. So uh, when I first came to Boundary County and was working in the community garden and nothing was growing, it's organic, and I found out they had not added any manure or any nutrients for at least three years. And uh, we've had to work hard to turn that around. Okay, so we frequently get the question, when should you test your soil? Um, of course, it's best to test as close to the time of fertilizer application. Um, <clears throat> so you have to kind of think ahead a little bit, but there's a lot of very quick turnaround labs available now. So you can definitely optimize what you're going to purchase and within a week of doing it. If you do spring testing, that will tell you what you need to apply for your intended crops. And that's usually what people um, want to know. So we try to do a soil testing class about that time, April-ish. Um, if you wanna test in the fall or you hadn't tested in the spring, you might just find out what needs to be replaced so you can plan ahead for the next year. Things might change a little bit over the winter, but um, it still will tell you where you're at or what you used over the summer. And the other good reason for testing over time will tell you how your soil is changing. Maybe you've got some goals of increasing the organic matter, most of us do, or perhaps optimizing the pH if you're in an area with um, acidic or alkaline soils. Um, question is how many samples do I need? Of course, your soil test recommendations are only as good as your soil test that you send to the, your soil that you send to be tested. So it's really critical that you have an excellent um, sample that you're sending in that's representative. An absolute minimum of 10 samples from each sampling unit is necessary to obtain an acceptable sample. And here's a chart from a, a, a new uh, <clears throat> revision of our, of our bulletin on soil testing to guide fertilizer management that Olga Walsh published recently in 2020. And uh, it says for fields of less than five acres, you need 15 and uh, larger size fields, you need to uh, have more um, samples as shown in the chart. So um, here's some photos of even a, even a raised bed on the left, you need to be taking a number of samples. You need to push aside the top residue. And uh, at this point, we weren't using a probe. Uh, we were using a shovel and a trowel, and that is a lot harder to get a, an even slice down through the rooting zone. So a soil probe really, really helps with this task. And you'll see we've got a white plastic bucket, nice clean white plastic bucket to collect them in. Um, if you're doing something commercially, uh, you, I recommend that you look at the web soil survey and even if you're just in a, in a garden area, you may want to do this as well, but um, it'll show you the soil survey for your area and it'll get you an idea of maybe the, the lack of uniformity or the uniformity um, in the soils that you're, that you're dealing with here. 
any area any areas of obvious field or soil differences should be sampled differently, but it is hard sometimes to figure out what the sampling units should be. Here's another figure from the bulletin and it shows some different sampling units, a wet bottom, a steep slope, a flat area, a moderate slope, a gentle slope, um, some shallow soil that's emitted. <clears throat> so any areas with different topography, different crop histories, areas with obvious different fertility, if you've noticed that you've got some areas that aren't yielding well, then definitely have a sample unit there. And you're going to want to plan out a random path, such as a zigzag, like I have in the first gentle slope section there, through each sampling unit, and uh, avoid or discard surface residue. And uh, we're going to show a little video here. Hi, we're going to show you how to demonstrate two hay pro uh, two soil probes today. One is the step in one, and the other you just push with your hand. We've used a Sharpie to mark them at 12 inches to make sure you're getting into the rooting zone. All right, this is a, a very, very much uh, easier than using a shovel because you can just push straight on down and you get a nice column of soil. And um, you'll just go around to your random spots and have to use your hand there to clean out the shaft where um, you dug the soil. Here is the step-in version. This is fantastic if you've got to do a lot of sampling. This particular one even has a hinge so you can um, open up and just drop that line of soil straight into your bucket. So some of you got the step-in ones. If you've got to do a lot of soil sampling, that one is, is excellent. We just did this this week, so the soil was frozen and didn't make a nice um, column, but normally it will. Um, so the next important thing is what do you do once you've got your sample? Um, you've used a clean bucket to collect your subsample from a randomized pattern in your sampling unit. You're going to mix it really well um, and then fill your sampling bag to the line so that you've got enough. Or you can use a baggie and label that. But um, if you've got the soil sampling bags, or, or if you don't, you can always get a hold of the lab and they'll send you a box of them. As soon as possible, air dry your samples on a plastic surface. This is preferable to freezing them because they're just going to thaw when you melt them anyway, um, and then the, you can deteriorate the, uh, the nutrients that are in your samples. So the best way to do that is to dump them out on a plastic and a day or two should be sufficient unless your soils are really wet. So that's the best way to uh, treat them before you ship them. So um, my husband, who was the star of the video there, is a retired soil scientist. I'm really fortunate to have his expertise. Um, he teaches classes for me. In fact, that's how I met him, um, because he was on a list of people willing to teach this topic, soil science. Um, and he wanted to just try out a bunch of different labs and do a comparison and then present the information in a class. And um, there is a whole list of different labs you can choose. Certified soil labs should be um, where you go to look for sources and there's a link there. And uh, we compared a number of different laboratories for price, speed, and the detail of the recommendations. The University of Idaho just raised their price to $48. I talked to the guy in charge of the lab um, for your basic soil test. It takes several weeks um, and there are no recommendations. They're just not set up for the commercial level that some of the other labs are like Stukenholtz, which is $38 and up depending on what nutrients and tests that you want. Uh, just takes 48 hours once they receive the sample. You get a lot of data uh, for that price and some other, there's another one that's like 50, a little over $50 that's really complete. Um, and you get lots of data and great recommendations. You can call and talk to them. Uh, we tested a couple others, uh, but the find that we really enjoyed was Midwest Laboratories. There's various packages ranging from $10 and up that really allows um, commercial producers to do some extensive soil sampling for a reasonable amount. 
It takes three business days once they receive the samples. You have to have an account and log into their website to see the results with the recommendations. Um, the, so the prices in service varied considerably from the different commercial labs and uh, Midwest Laboratories was by far the most reasonable lab. It's in the Midwest. I can't remember which state, but um, anyway, the service was excellent. And one test that I really like is the garden or lawn test for all my uh, master gardeners and our uh, just our home gardeners. It's $15 for a very complete test that include well it's complete enough for what they're what they desired and that is organic matter nitrogen phosphorus potassium ph magnesium calcium sodium soluble salts um, calcium uh, buffer index and cation exchange capacity so that is a good find and that's a, a price point that um, the people are comfortable with the other uh, comparison we did was your rapid so test kits. You can buy these kind of things at the hardware store. Uh, it's about $10, that enough material to do two samples. However, the results are all are difficult to interpret. The colors are um, challenging to decide where they lie, as you can kind of see. Um, and numerous scientific studies have indicated that these test kits are not comparable to laboratory results, and really not worth the money. So I've got a number of resources, including a link to the new uh, U of I bulletin done by Olga Walsh and Bob Mahler, Terry Tyndall, soil testing to guide fertilizer management. And uh, the older bulletin 704, which we use constantly when we, when we have handouts that when people come into the office, I didn't know we had an update. Um, I did include a, a link to that one because you have, there's a PDF and the new bulletin is uh, online only. I did not see a way to print that. Okay, so that is what I have for today. Um, we have a few moments for questions. I don't I don't have a question but um, I do have a comment my my favorite soil probes are the ones they're really really hard to find but they here I have one right here it's these ones that actually have two foot holds if you're doing a whole ton of soil probes you can jump on it with two feet and it goes in so much easier because you know you're not trying to like kind of awkwardly balance there um, but anyway they're kind of expensive but if you're doing any amount of lots of soils like if you have a lot of people coming and ask I recommend getting one of those because then you can take a, the soils a lot easier that way. I'd like to oh. add also this is Reed you know in American Falls there they've got arts manufacturing which is they um, make soil probes really good ones and they sell them all over the world so um, if anybody ever wants that information, I can get it to them also. But that's in American Falls down here in, in Power County. Yeah, why don't you, could you send that um, to me and then maybe we'll, we'll distribute it. We talked about sending PDFs to all the participants, um, some of the resources. So if you would share that, Reed. And um, we'll make a, we're going to do something online where we'll have the recording and the resources. And also the, the bucket uh, with an auger bit, it does a really good job. It, and that makes it easy to collect. It's, it's basically a bucket with a hole in it. It's a reinforced hole in the bottom of the bucket. You got a one inch auger bit and it can just pulls it right, pull right up out of the soil. It does a good job. Oh, I hadn't heard of that. I was really grateful to have the step in one because we had to, we had to pull like 400 samples for some white rot trials that we're doing up here, some white rot decline trials. So uh, we got that step in one with the hinge. So I have a question about how um, people are handling soil tests in their office. Um, do you hand out materials to somebody and say here's all the labs you can choose from or do you give them recommendations on which lab to go to? 
We have a list of different labs. We have a little handout and I think Jen Jensen made it. It was already here when I came into her previous position and it has, um, it didn't have Midwest labs on it. And so now we include that one because that $15 garden test is a, is a popular one. Um, so it's got the U of I lab and then the Stukenholz and um, there's another one, I think. There's a number to choose from, but it's got that link to all of them. We don't want to, you know, just say go to this place, of course. But we, we do that and then we have the bags from a couple of the different labs in the office. And then we always were handing out that um, 704 bulletin about how to do it, which has some of the charts that I used. And I, I think we'll continue to do that. It's real. It's a good one. I, I usually offer to send it off for them as a service out of my office just because then I can continue the conversation. So I'll take the sample and then I will send it off. And when I get it back, then I can contact them and we can still have a conversation about it. Usually if I re give a recommendation of, oh yeah, you can send it here, then they never call me back and we never talk about their soils again. And so if I send it off, then I can call them up and then we can have that conversation about this is what the soil test says. And this is what the recommendations are. And this is why you can do this and this. And so, you know, you can still have a conversation with them if you do it for them. Um, I know some people don't like to do it for them, but I do it just because it's easier for me to continue that conversation. So you just pay for the shipping yourself? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so depending on who you go through, um, so usually soil test charges 42 bucks. And then it costs seven something to get it up there. I don't remember exactly. We just charge them about 50 bucks. I, I, it works out to almost $50 after everything's shipped and everything. And so I just charge them $50. And I, I explain to them what I'm doing. It's not like I'm, I, I say, th this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm sending this to, mo I'm sending this to soil test. They're charging me 42 bucks and it's going to cost me seven bucks to get it up there. So, and anyway, so I explained it to what's going on, but I, just to make it simpler, um, I just send it all off for them and then I can call them back and we can have that conversation. Oh, that's a great idea. We, we had an idea. I, I had the same worry that, you know, people come in and get the, the information. I never see them again. So we had a class that um, planned for last spring that we had to cancel. I mean, I, we'll just, I think we'll do a repeat on that, that, um, my husband goes, to, he's a resource person on the soil, on how to do soil tests and what you're doing. And um, then we hand out the materials and they were pulled soil samples and they, that this was the plan, but we had to cancel it. Um, so the whole class, there were like 30 people signed up, would bring in their soil samples, we'd mail it off, and then we'd have a second class where we um, can discuss the results and people can ask questions. Again, um, just that same concern. Um, let's continue the conversation. How did it go? And it just makes it easy. They, people were happy to have people were looking forward to it. So we'll have it again when we can meet in, uh, meet in person with a larger group. We do have another question in the chat, Kate. David was asking, he's growing perennial forbs for seed and some of the rows stay in for up to six years. Would you recommend testing rows instead of fields to see what different species are using? What do you think about that? Well, uh, other people can jump in if they have an idea too. I mean, I'm not a soil scientist, but it, seemed, it seems logical to me that you would uh, test in the rooting zone of that crop. Um, and of course, do a lot of samples and make, you know, a lot of subsamples and mix it up. Anybody else have a comment on that? So I would recommend you test the areas that are managed differently. So if it's a five foot by hundred foot thing that you are curious about, test that. If it is a hundred acre field, then you know do a hundred random samples throughout that. Um, you know it's it, if it's managed differently or if if you're getting different results from it, then test those areas differently. But if you're not concerned about it being different, then test it all the same. Thank you. I did get another question. Um, and this one is about how you would test your soil if you don't live on your property. Um, so is there anything that you know of, any um, company or resource where they can go out 
and um, test for you without you being the one that collects all of those samples? Oh, well, a lot of fieldmen actually do do the soil testing. I know my, um, my nephew farms and he said that, um, you know, his field man does the tests and he gets charged for it and he, uh, he doesn't get the results. So he, I said, well, you should contact him and tell him you want the results. But yeah, I think a lot of places will do that for you. Um, I don't know where this person is, but I'm sure that if you contact, um, they're in the Southern Idaho area in, around Bellevue. So if anyone has any um, recommendations for a good company for that in that area or a person, if you wanted to put those in the chat, that would be awesome. Tell them to count, contact their county agent and uh, they, I'm sure they know. Awesome. Great, Stukenholz does it. My son works for Stukenholz. It's, it's actually not cheap though. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it is, my, this is what my nephew said, it was very expensive. And so we were gonna um, pull some samples and send some off to the Midwest labs and, and play with some stuff he wanted to do. I think Nicole raised a hand. Yeah, hi Kate, how are you? Good. Um, my question is about screening. Uh, certain parts of our property has, I mean, enormous amounts of rock, but also lots of small pebbles. So even if I'm using a probe, 12 inches down, um, there's still so much rock in the sample. Do the labs expect a certain degree of screening? Well, I don't know what the labs expect, but if I were you, I would um, take a soil screen and get those rocks out okay. of your sample. You could dry it first and then um, if it's probably, I was just thinking if they're wet, you're going to probably want to dry it and then have you seen like my, we have one hardware screens in a wooden frame and you just, some soils. Yep, we can like that. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Hi, this is uh, David here. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I, I had the question about the perennial forbs and a uh, follow-up question is a lot of those roots are, um, you know, sometimes up to three to four feet deep. So they're mining a whole different layer. Is there any, anyone that's heard any research of taking sampling deeper into the soil than that six inches for perennials? Yeah, I know just what you need. You, we need one of those ones that you mount on the back of your tractor <laughs> that, that goes down six feet. A friend of mine has one and uh, a farmer, he's, he's done so much to try to improve his ground. And he, so he has one, he invested in one that is just goes in the back of the tractor. I have no idea how expensive they are. Is there's a hand one? one that there's a hand one that you can get. Um, I can put a link to it in the chat. Oh, great! It Thank extends you. down, and you can test deeper if you need to. But but so but you would say you would recommend getting a test close to as deep as I think some of the roots are going to see what they're binding down there, what they're using, or. Well, that goes into the plant physiology, but mo probably more than half your roots are still in that top twelve inches. You're still yeah. you're going to have roots that go down that deep, but. Um, and it would be good to know, but it's, the top 12 inches is still going to be your most important. Okay, thank you. If, if you're going to do that, you'll want to, to break that apart. So you're doing the top 12 inches and the next 12 inches. Don't group it all together so that you've got that kind of layered in the sample as well. Okay, thank you. Good point, Ron. Thank you for jumping in. This is great. You're getting all kinds of extension educators. Hey, Kate. Hey, Ken. It's Ken Hart. So the... I don't know, um, probably 10 years ago, I had a project where we had this soil sample four feet and the on campus, they have a tractor that, with the rear mounted soil probe you can do. And I suppose there's one down in one of the stations as well. I don't know for sure. Might check around if you really need something like that. If you need a lot of them and you gotta go four feet, maybe it's good at Genesee. You could do it by hand at Genesee, four feet, but not anywhere else around that I know. Thanks. Thank you. 